quoting those who advocate the globe model. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Isaiah 40, 22. The word circle is Strong's H2329, hug. It means circle, circuit, or compass. Under divine inspiration, Isaiah was deliberate in his word choice, not lacking a Hebrew word to describe ball as in the following. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. Isaiah 22, 18. Isaiah chose to use Strong's H 1754, Jure, not 2329, Hug, altogether different terms. Yahuwah sits upon the vault of the heavens above the earth and the inhabitants of earth appear as grasshoppers from this vantage point. How great he is! Now just take a look at the ball earth, or the supposed ball earth, where the axis is 23.4 degrees off being vertical. It leads you to 66.6 .6 degrees off horizontal. If you think this is just a coincidence, take a look at this. Earth is supposedly orbiting around the sun, and moving at 66,600 miles an hour. According to scripture, the earth is immovable. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. First Chronicles 16.30 Yahuwah reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. Yahuwah is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Psalm 93, 1. Say among the heathen that Yahuwah reigneth. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. Psalm 96, 10 A.B. Bless Yahuwah, O my soul. O Yahuwah, my Elohim, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. Psalm 104, verses 1 and 5. The earth and the heavenly bodies are enclosed by the firmament. And Elohim said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And Elohim made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And Elohim called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Genesis 1, 6-8. It could not be any clearer. There is water both below the firmament and above the firmament. Praise him, ye heaven of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Psalm 148, verse 4. The word translated as firmament here is Strong's H7549, Rakiya which signifies the vault of heaven supporting waters above. The heavenly bodies were placed inside this firmament. And Elohim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and Elohim set them in the firmament of the heaven. Genesis 1, 14 to 17. Scripture states in plain language that, one, there is water both below and above the firmament. Genesis 1, 6 to 8. Two, the heavenly bodies were placed inside the firmament. 
Genesis 1, 14 to 18. The firmament is inherently solid. The root word of rakia or firmament is Strong's H7554, raka, which means by analogy to expand, by hammering, by implication to overlay with thin sheets of metal. Beat, make broad, spread abroad, stamp, stretch. We conclude as the firmament holds back waters, it is solid, as if hammered out like sheet metal. Elihu, in his conversation with Job, confirms this using this very word, rakka, to express how Yahuwah spread out the sky. Hast thou with him spread out, H7554, rakka, the sky, which is strong and as a molten looking glass? Job 37, 18. This is a key passage quoting those who advocate the globe model. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Isaiah 40, 22. The word circle is Strong's H2329, chug. It means circle, circuit, or compass. Under divine inspiration, Isaiah was deliberate in his word choice, not lacking a Hebrew word to describe ball as in the following. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. Isaiah 22, 18. Isaiah chose to use Strong's H1754, Dur, not 2329, Chug, altogether different terms. Yahuwah sits upon the vault of the heavens above the earth, and the inhabitants of earth appear as grasshoppers from this vantage point. How great he is! Father Yahuwah sits on or above the firmament. He has stretched over the earth like a tent, often found in such terms throughout the scriptures, and agrees completely with a conceptualized flat earth. Eliphaz, too, confirms the solid nature of the firmament when, while speaking to Job, he says, Yahuwah walks upon the Chug, Strong's H2329, used by Isaiah to note the vault of heaven. Thick clouds are a covering to him that he seeth not, and he walketh in the circuit, H2329, Chug, of heaven, H8064, Shamayim, Job 22:14. Is not El in the height of heaven, H8064, Shamayim, and behold the height of the stars, how high they are. Job 22.12 According to scripture, the earth is flat. We find insightful moments in Job chapter 38 as Yahuwah appears to him with many questions. One is especially telling. Hast thou perceived the breadth of the earth? Declare if thou knowest it all. Job 38, 18. The word breath here is Strong's H7338, Rahab, which means breath, broad or wide expanse. Yahuwah asks Job how wide the earth was. This seems a legitimate question on a flat earth, but makes little sense of a globe. The details of Nebuchadnezzar's prophetic dream in Daniel 4 also indicate a flat earth. 
These were the visions of my head while on my bed. I was looking and behold a tree in the midst of the earth, and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens, and it could be seen to the ends of all the earth. Daniel 4, 10 and 11, the New Living Version. While this was just a dream, only on a flat earth would this be possible. Now, let us look at the return of our loving Savior. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Revelation 6, 12 to 17. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen. Revelation 1.7 According to John the Revelator, 1. John agrees with other prophets. Stars were not larger than the earth and millions of miles away, as one star could destroy many earths. Note as well, John tells us the stars fell to the earth, not hurled to the earth. 2. The heavens will then depart like a scroll, Revelation 6.14. This is consistent with the firmament being stretched out like a curtain or tent, and making no sense if the earth were a sphere. 3. Everyone on earth will see Yahushua coming in glory, Revelation 1.7. This makes perfect sense on a flat earth, but not upon a spherical earth. 4. The wicked and unrepentant will seek to hide themselves from the wrath of the Lamb and the face of him that sitteth on the throne, Revelation 6, 15 and 16. When the heavens are rolled back like a scroll, the wicked will behold the face of him who sits upon the throne above the vault of heaven and will seek to hide themselves. Scripture states that at the second coming of Yahushua, the heavens will depart as a scroll when it is rolled together and that every eye shall see him. See Revelation 1, 7, Revelation 6, 12 to 17. This cannot be reasonably understood given the global model of the earth. When the sky is rolled back, the wicked will behold Yahuwah upon his throne and will seek to hide from his awesome presence. It is the heavenly bodies that move, not the earth. Then spake Joshua, in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ahalan. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. Joshua 10, 12 and 13. Joshua commands the sun and moon to stand still, and the sun stood still in the midst of heaven. The earth is not told to stop spinning. Thus we must admit this passage clarity. Science vindicates 
a stationary earth. In Isaiah, Yahuwah caused the sun to return in the sky, causing the shadow of the sundial to move backwards. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which is gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, ten degrees backward. So the sun returned ten degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. Isaiah 38, 8. Isaiah believed the sun moved, not the earth. King David also believed the sun moved. The heavens declare the glory of El, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Psalm 19, 1 to 6. Yahuwah forbid we make the testimony of the prophets subservient to the theories of erring and deceitful men. It is not scripture alone which testifies to the flat earth reality. The empirical evidence is absolutely overwhelming. Evidence abounds for the honest seeker of truth. Objections on the surface seem valid, but fail miserably under close examination. World's Last Chance invites you to thoroughly study with honest heart. Now, just like the Gnostic mythical concept of evolution could be demonstrated to have originated long before Darwin, the mythological concept of a heliocentric universe can also be shown to have risen long before individuals such as Copernicus were credited with popularizing it. The Gnostic origins of a non-stationary Earth take us back to the figures of Philolaeus and Pythagoras. Most sources credit Philolaeus as the one who came up with the model of the Earth, Sun, and Moon all rotating around a central fire in the universe, while others claim that Pythagoras held to this idea even before his student. Either way, what is absolutely undeniable is the extremely Gnostic and esoteric footing on which both these men stood. To most of us average folks, Pythagoras is presented in school as an ancient Greek mathematician who gave us basic proofs such as the famous Pythagorean theorem regarding triangles, where a squared plus b squared equals c squared. To occult adepts, however, Pythagoras is understood to be one of the most revered of ancient mystics and mystery school teachers. Said to have been consecrated to the god Apollo before even his birth, Pythagoras was reared un under the tutelage of teachers such as Thales and Anazimander at Miletus, but as a young man he found himself unsatisfied by their seemingly disparate and contradictory forms of Gnosticism. He set out to find a more synthesized and universal truth and allegedly traveled through most of the great civilizations at the time, visiting the priests of various mystery schools in places like Egypt, Babylon, and Chaldea. He basically combined all the occult knowledge he could gather from the world in his day, and then eventually settled in Croton, Greece, where he started his own mystery school, and developed a system of initiations and degrees, training through aestheticism, the majority of which was embedded within a complex code of numerical values and derivations. Thus, a vast amount of the concepts found in occult numerology and sacred geometry, which have filtered down through the centuries to our own time, can be traced back to Pythagoras himself.
Bible does mention the edges of the earth, the four corners of the earth, and how Satan brought Jesus Christ to the top of the mountain and showed him all kingdoms of the world. How can Satan show Jesus all kingdoms of the world if the world is round? How can there be edges of the world if the world's a sphere? The Bible also mentions how the earth is immovable and is set on pillars. So for the believers that still believe in the ball earth, the round earth, got to reconsider according to science and the satanic system the earth is supposedly tilted at a 23.4 degree angle off vertical and that leaves you at 66.6 .6 degrees off horizontal now what are the chances of that Psalms 8 53.77 Nasha, 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 Nasha. Anyway, what Nasha means is to deceive. How it's used in the King James? To deceive, beguile. It's it's used according to uh, to to many different scholars. In uh, it's used in in the Bible as to beguile, to deceive. It's a uh, primitive root. It means to lead astray, to delude, to seduce. <laughs> ah, boy, these people think of everything, don't they? To lead into error, to cause to go astray. And it got different examples here. And the one that caught my eye was it's used the Hebrew word Strong's. H5377 is used in Genesis 3.13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is it that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me. H5377, and I did eat. And again, Nasha. Strong's H5377. Nasha. Nasha. The Hebrew word for took up, which is nasa, means to bring up, went up, carry up, take up, took, and go up. Uh, this also has a negative connotation to lead astray, mentally delude, morally seduce, beguile, deceive, greatly. Another thing I want to point out here, let's take a look. Well, let's take a look at this model with the Earth supposedly orbiting the Sun, and of course the Moon orbiting Earth. And while this is all taking place, Earth is supposedly rotating. Well, let's take a look at this image here. Of Polaris, the North Star. Take a look at this model here. Now, explain to me, for anybody out there, how is it possible for the North Star or Polaris to remain constant above the supposed North Pole while it's orbiting around the Sun. It makes absolutely no sense because it doesn't happen. It does not take place. That's simple. Now let's take a look at this. 